Hi, welcome to Calypso Tutorials. In this tutorial, we'll see how to update the application in runtime. Operative systems like Android have built-in features to automatically update applications. To use that feature, you need to upload your application to the store, and the user must enable the automatic updates on the mobile device. If you don't want to upload your application, or simply rely on the user to perform the automatic updates, or even if your operating system doesn't support that feature, Calypso has a built-in functions who work in any platform. Just like you synchronize data, you can also synchronize the application itself in order to update it. For that purpose, I'm going to copy-paste one of our synchronize buttons. Let's change its name. Let's call it Sync App, for instance. Now, if we check out the synchronize action, we just need to select Get Project Update and Update Project. This option uses the Terminal ID property to fetch the project update from the server which means it uses the same folder structure as the data synchronization. The big difference is that in this specific case, Calypso transfers only the project update file. So it doesn't synchronize the entire folder, it simply synchronizes the project update file. Let's save and let's deploy to the PDA. Here's our project, we can log in. We can see it's the new version. Okay, how can we now deploy our project and update it in runtime? Well, to make it easier, we're gonna do a small change in our project. Let's create here a label Call it project version and let's put some text to remind us what it is. And when the form opens, let's set the value of that label to the keyword project version. Now this keyword holds the value that we input here. And now, instead of redeploying the project, I'm going to deploy generate project file. We need to do it for a specific terminal number or a range of terminal numbers. In our case, I'm going to generate for terminal number one. Please make sure that your device is also number one. Remember, you can go to config, and as you can see, Calypso tells me that my terminal ID is number one. So I can exit and generate it here. Okay, so if we check out the synchronization path, terminal number one to PDA, you can find the update project waiting for be sent to the mobile device. So we can synchronize the application in our mobile device. Calypso is going to fetch the file. Update. And then reboots the application. And as you can see, it's already the new version of the application. Remember that the file is deleted from the server upon a successful transfer. Therefore, this feature depends entirely on the terminal ID property to work. If you have a lot of mobile devices, or if you work online, or simply don't want to bother yourself with numbering the devices, you have an alternative. Let me start to go to our project 
and duplicate our button. So I'm going to put this here, pull this one here, it's our first attempt, copy paste. So now we have two buttons to synchronize the application. And in this one, in the synchronize action, you can see we have another option called update project. This option has no communication profile, so it does not transfer any type of file. It only updates the project, which means we're responsible to transfer the file ourselves before updating the application. Okay, so let's select this option. And what can we do to transfer the file? Well, basically, we can do it by any means we wish. We can do it by FTP, if we don't want to use MIS Communicator, or even any other mean that you might see fit. In our case, with a powerful communication tool as MIS Communicator, I'm going to obviously use it. So we can retrieve files from the server with the get file from PC action. So under the MIS Communication actions, get file from PC, I need it before the synchronize action. So we start by selecting the profile we want. I'm going to use the one we've always used so far. Now we need to specify the file. You can get it from any place on the server, but in that case you need to grant access to the whole server in MIS Communicator at the product configuration level. So in the same place where the path is defined, you need, and the path, I mean this path we've seen so far, in the same place, you can tell to MIS Communicator that he only has access to this path and subsequent uh, subfolders or to the entire server. For safety reasons, I'm going to use just this folder. So I'm going to, I'm not going to enable any option in MIS Communicator, meaning that the mobile device can only access this path. So I can create folders and files in this path in this path and access it from the mobile device. So back to our action, to fetch the file, if you check the notes, Calypso tells that if it starts with a backslash, the working folder on the PC will be the one the final on MIS communicator. So that's what we want. We want to get from that folder, so backslash. And now instead of putting directly the name of the file, I'm going to use a keyword called project name and all it's left it's the extension so an update uh, um, an update file for Calypso it's the KCP extension it's recommended to respect the case okay because on Android um, the operative system is case sensitive for the target file we can leave it empty because when that's the case, the file is stored in the 2PDA folder, the same one when it's Calypso automatically fetching the file. You can see it here. If this parameter is empty, target folder will be Calypso 2PDA. As for the mode, we'll replace the file if it already exists. And of course, we won't delete it from the server. This way, another device can retrieve it if necessary. That's it save. Now I'm going to exit the application on the mobile device and deploy it directly. We can see the version number. It's still 1.00. We can log in. And we can see now that we have the two synchronized buttons. And let's produce a new version of the project. Well, just to make it easier, I'm going to change the project version just to 1.0. And Calypso always prompts us to make a backup when we change the, either the project version or the database version. I don't want to backup. Now I'm going to generate a new project file. And of course, we still need to generate it for a specific terminal ID. But in this case, we can do it for whatever we want, because we're going to have to move the file manually. So we've generated for terminal number one, which means we need to go to terminal number one, to PDA, 
cut this off and paste it here. Now we can do our synchronize application button. It fetches the file. Update. Restart. And we can see that this is our new version. And the file is still on the server. Notice now that if we log in, and press the button again, Calypso fetches the file, updates, and restarts again. So the problem is, you usually don't put your application update method on a button. You run it in the opening of the form. So in that case, you have a problem because Every time we press this button, Calypso fetches the file and updates the application, regardless of the version. So if you have this on the opening of a form, basically your project will be in an infinite loop. But there's a simple solution for that. We just need to manage the project version. One way of achieving that is through a simple text file. In the same folder we place the project update, I'll create a text file. I'll call it version. Inside it's going to hold the project version. So in our project, before retrieving the update file, let's retrieve this version file. So we can do another get file from PC. to get the backslash version txt file. I'm going to save it in the project folder. That path can be retrieved with the p folder and it's cross-platform, so you should always use the p folder keyword to work in the path uh, of your mobile device, either Android, either Windows Desktop, Windows Mobile, etc. So on P folder, I want to create the version txt file. If it exists, I want to replace it and I don't want to delete the source file. Afterwards, it's time to load the content of that file. We can do that with file load content. I'm going to store it in temporary variable 0 and rename it to server version or version on server and save. Finally, we need to compare the value of the inside of the file with the one of the current application. So if server version is different from project version, we do get the update file and we do synchronize. Otherwise, we do nothing. We can even delete the else and we can collapse this to make it easier to read. So let's save, let's redeploy the application. Let's log in. So all that matters now is the version file. So our current version is 1.0. So I'm going to put that in the file, save it, and press the sync app button. And as you can see, Calypso does nothing because the version file uh, version, it's the same one as the project we're running. Of course, we can change on the project, switch it to 1.1, save, do not backup, 
generate a new project file. Get a new file, put it here. But even this won't be enough because we haven't updated the value on the inside the file. So if we now say the current version is 1.1, which is true, we've just generated a new file and press the button. Clips fetches the version file, checks that it's different from its own, so he then ch fetches the KZP file. He updates, he reboots, and if we log in again, and we do it again, we can see that it does not. You can even log out and you can see that it's version 1.1. Please don't forget that you can copy and paste forms, controls and actions between projects. So you don't need to develop the same script over and over again. So the buttons we've just developed can be copied between projects. Congratulations, you've concluded the tutorial about application update.